So let's use Halhun's principle to look at reflection. So we will do Halhun's reflection. Let's see. So let's imagine that we have our dielectric surface and that light comes in. And to think about Halhun's, we say, OK, it's a plane wave. So we're going to think about the wave front for a plane wave. That's a surface. Looks kind of like that. And we think about little spheres. They're going to show up along, across the wave front. And we want to think about how these spheres expand. right? So we already showed in the previous uh, board these expand. And you just draw a line across their periphery so they move forward. So we know they're going to move forward. It gets interesting when one of them hits the surface. Because then you have to start making them expand differently. Okay? So it was all boring. Then this one hits, and this one is still going. So let's think about what happens when this one expands while this one waits, and this one expands as a spherical wave while we wait for that one. Okay? So let's see. How big would this one get while we wait for this one to get there, to, to get to here? So they were together at this point. right? They moved together, and then this one hit the surface and started expanding. This one had to keep going. So this one grew by this much. Right? This is the distance the light traveled at the speed of light while this one grew. So if you wanted the circle of how big this one is, you just draw a circle around this one to that line. And then that is how big that one got while it waited for that one to get to the surface. What about this one? This one got to the surface first. So how big did it get while it waited for this one to get there? Well, you draw this line, and you say it had to wait for it to go that far. So you draw this circle around this one. It goes to that point, and then you move it over. OK, so by the time this Halhun's wavelet got to here, this one had been growing on the surface that big. This one grew on the surface that big. And now, where does it go from there? As you draw the peripheral line, the tangent line to those three circles, looks like that. And then you say, OK, all the rays move perpendicular to that line. And then you have your light coming in and your light reflecting out. OK, so we can clean it up a little bit and put in our normals, because now we can think about the angles. Right? It appears that it gives the normal law of reflection, but let's see if it does so mathematically. So the angle of incidence would be kind of there. So all three of them basically come in the same angle of incidence because it's a plane wave. And then the angle of reflection would be uh, there. Okay. So let's think uh, what we can say here. We're going to say the separation between these is L, just some distance L, between where the front wavelet hit and the back wavelet hits. And then we can also start to think about these angles. So you can actually see that this is 90 minus theta i. Because if you can see the geometry here, we have two parallel lines. We have this line going at an angle between two parallel lines. So if that's theta i, then this is also theta i. Right there is theta i. And if that's theta i and this is 90 degrees, that's 90 minus theta i. Okay. So that angle, 90 minus theta i. We can also say that this is 90 minus theta r for the same reason. There's theta r. Therefore, that is theta r. Therefore, what's left to the right triangle, to the 90 degrees, is 90 minus theta r. OK. Well, Identify those two. Now let's draw a right triangle and draw just the right one. There's a lot of right triangles in there. Let's draw that one. Okay. If we draw this right triangle, here's the right angle, because that is perpendicular to the direction of the ray there. And uh, we want to think about this angle. Let's think about its cosine. The cosine of 90 minus theta i is what? It's the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Okay? The adjacent is basically the speed of light times this time delay between when this one hit and when that one hit, which we can call delta t. So the adjacent length is c times this delta t, the width of the time of this thing we're looking at. And the hypotenuse is just what we call L, adjacent over hypotenuse. And now let's look at this right triangle, because we're thinking about the other angle. We can say, OK, here is this, and then there's the right angle right there. So we can say, what is the cosine of 90 minus theta r? Well, it's the um, adjacent. And that is, again, the uh, c delta t. Right, that's this uh, equivalent distance. So C delta t over the hypotenuse is L. So you can see from this expression, if that 
is all true, then theta i equals theta r. So kind of a geometrical argument. You could also do it with graph paper and prove it to yourself truly geometrically that the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. And you get it from this idea that a plane wavefront splits into spheres and the spheres propagate rather than the plane.